me some set of blades. Perfect. Welcome to another episode of my Too Fat to Ride vlogs. Today we're doing something a little bit different. I've been up to Romsey Country Stores and had the clippers sharpened that I've had to borrow off the wonderful Dawn because well, my clippers have gone completely missing and all I can find is two sets of corded clippers that you have to plug in and well we don't have any electric here so there's nowhere to plug things in. I bought Hope out of the field just so she's away from the other two because they can be a bit silly and I don't want them getting involved while I'm clipping. So got her a nice hay net. She can just stand and munch on that. And I'll just take off her rug. For those of you that don't know what clipping is, it's when you take off a horse's winter coat. And I know that might sound a bit crazy for some people, but it's really necessary. And the reason why I'm clipping hope at the moment is because she has been sweating like you wouldn't believe when I've been lunging her and even when we've just been walking around the fields so it's got to come off. I was actually a little bit worried because last week she was wet to touch and uh, she did look like she had been sweating and but she was cold and I was thinking oh I really hope she's not colicking, she's not a bit colicky, but she had no other signs. And I think all that was, was because it's been so mild lately. And with her size, she just can't cope with the heat as well for this time of year. So I clip hope pretty much every year, but um, I didn't do it last year because, well, I'll get into that when I, do my how did I end up on YouTube video which I'm actually working on in, at the minute it's a bit long so I'm not going to get into it now but didn't clip her last year got to clip her this year so yeah first of all I need to get her used to the clippers again she probably is going to freak out a little bit let's just turn them on go okay. okay. they're quite noisy they just Put them next to a microphone, you'll be able to hear they're actually quite noisy. Tighten them up a little bit. There we go. And the best thing to do is just run them over without clipping first. So she just gets used to that vibration and the feel of the clippers again. So I'll let her just have a little sniff of them. And I've got a trusty carrot. Ooh, carrot. See? And I'm just going to hold. You're okay. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. You're a good girl. Yes, you are a good girl. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. There we go. There's a good girl. See, and just doing that really gets them used to the vibration and the feel of having the clippers on them. She'll get used to it in a second and it won't even bother her. She'll just go back to munching. So, I'm just going to... Run the clippers up a little bit. 
and you end up with a nice cool patch down to the skin. See? And it just takes that off, goes all over the floor. And the birds love it because they can make a fabulous little nest out of the hair. So there we go. Plus, it won't cover the whole of the yard in fur. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. There's a good girl. that sure what clip to go with to be honest i know everyone has a preference let me know what your preference is in the comments below because i always like to hear it i know some people make up their own clips which is cool uh i'm thinking probably a full clip keep her legs on because i don't want to be messing with her feathers her belly gets very wet so I'll get all that off but i think what i'm gonna do is leave a little patch where a saddle goes just so it doesn't rub under a saddle my scarf is getting ruined though so i'm gonna have to take that off and i think having two gilets on probably isn't the best of ideas either so i'll take that off it is quite warm at the minute Whew. she's gonna feel so much better after this so even though Hope's been clipped now, I'm still only going to be putting her lightweight rug back onto her. And the only reason she's having that on is because I really don't want to get him wet in the rain. Because she's a bit fat, she's got fat channels, and I don't want those filling with water and scalding her back so she'll end up with rain scald. That's the only reason that she's going to be wearing a lightweight rug. Just lately, there has been an absolute epidemic of people over-rugging their horses. I think primarily it's because rugs are so pretty now and they're so easy to come by, whereas back in the day we just had an old New Zealand rug and a sur single and that was pretty much it. Now we've got different colours, different weights, and you can even get rugs that are specifically designed to work with electric fencing. But a horse's winter coat isn't really ruled by temperature. It's primarily triggered by the amount of daylight. As the days get shorter in the fall, the decrease in sunlight signals the horse's body to start growing a thicker coat. That's how they know when to do it. This process is controlled by the pineal gland, which responds to the change in light. Now, temperature does influence coat growth, but not as much as daylight. Horses in cooler climates tend to grow much thicker coats for insulation, while those in warmer areas or breeds like thoroughbreds and Arabians, they usually have lighter coats. Breed does play a big role too. Horses like Clydesdales or Icelandic ponies are genetically designed to grow a much denser winter coat. Younger horses may grow thicker coats more easily, while older ones might not so much. Overall health, nutrition and living conditions matter as well. A healthy, well-fed horse will typically grow a good coat, but horses kept indoors or in warmer environments may not develop a full winter coat. Horses with conditions like Cushing's disease can also have abnormal coat growth, but that tends to be throughout the year. So yeah, sunlight is the main trigger for growing your horse's winter coat. And that is why people with show ponies tend to leave a light on for significant periods of time so that they don't grow their winter coats straight back through. We tend to clip horses every August, September, October, November, December, right into January. And then the nights becoming shorter and with the extra daylight, you'll find that your horse will start dropping that winter coat anyway. She's nearly done. I've never been very good at leg lines. I've always found that really difficult. But uh, so far, so good. I've still got to do her head. I'm only doing the underneath, I don't do the top. And I've got to do that shoulder. 
but at the minute the clippers are a little bit warm so i'm just waiting for those to cool down a bit fast and then we'll get her all done i'm absolutely covered covered it's all over me see it's all over the floor see it's absolutely everywhere it looks like it's been snowing hope's happy though she absolutely loves it when i do a long her back and she tries to groom the wooden post, which is quite funny, bless her. <laughs> so, I bet you're wondering, how much weight did she lose on the scales this week? Well, you're not going to believe it. And I've got to, I've got to put it down to the change that I made in our last episode, was episode five. I've got to put it down to that. Because this week I've lost three and a half pounds. Three and a half pounds. That's incredible, isn't it? Absolutely incredible. And that brings my total because I was on 15 and a half pounds. And that brings my total to 19 pounds. 19 pounds. That's almost 20 pounds, which sounds huge. 19 pounds amazing and i absolutely love to have a look at the before and after pictures of hope and oh, i'm absolutely gutted that i didn't weight tape her in the beginning that really frustrates me but it means that we can do this visually and well oh, let's have a look shall we so this was hope seven weeks ago that's exactly what she looked like and what spurred me on to start this weight loss process and weight loss journey in the first place. And now look at her. I think she looks quite amazing weight wise. She has definitely lost quite a few kilos. So yeah, I can't really be any more pleased with that, can I? The hard work really is paying off. And, well, let's get back to clipping the rest of her off. Believe it or not, I did ask on Facebook if any small businesses wanted to come and clip her for this, for this episode. And, you know, no one did. There we go. Just get some of the loose hairs off. I've gone over and over her coat a few extra times. Just so I haven't got an absolute ton of tram lines. No one likes a clip with a tram line. So yeah, that's about it. Oh, I am so pleased. 19 pounds off. Don't forget to drop me a message in the comment section below and tell me how you're getting on, how well you've got on over this last week. I love to read your messages and you know I answer every single one of them. I cannot wait now because it means we are getting really close to that day when we're going to be able to ride again. Close. It's in the next couple of weeks. I just know it. So what I've done is I've booked the amazing Donna Cooksey. If you don't know who she is, then I'll link one of her videos when she came and did Toby, my my 44 year old blind pony she's an amazing equine massage therapist and she's coming to have a look at hope just to see that she's okay to be ridden we do think it's always best to be safe rather than sorry so she's coming out to have a look at hope next week so that'll be the next video so for now bye bye